Live from the Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts. This is the YouTube channel vlog show in which video games, flash game show gameplays, along with sports and wrestling news, are the norm. This is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, good times, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now, here is the host of the show, the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself, Mr. Eric M. Lima! Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, for that lovely intro. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are watching yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. This is episode 198 of the show. November 30th, 2022, 10.18 p.m., the final episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans for November of 2022, as we head into December, the final month of the year of 2022. Um, just to let you know what's what's going on before we get started, uh, Clarence Gilgear Jr., who has been known playing, who is known as uh, to play Trevette in Walker, Texas Ranger, and he played, I think, one of the villains, I do believe, in... Uh, die Hard as the computer expert, um, also um, the first Die Hard, and also I think he was starring Matlock, has passed away at the age of 66 to con uh, condolences to family and friends of Mr. Gilliard, Clarence G Gilliard Jr., at the age, died at the age of 66, and uh, Christine McVie, who has been a singer-songwriter for Fleetwood Mac, passed away, also I believe at the age of 79, I think, so, uh, this year has not been very kind to our celebrities. It's, you know, looks like the Grim Reaper once again has been taking away a lot of celebrities away from us um, this year, and that's it's been a very tough year for Hollywood as well. That, that's a tough year for Hollywood. So, unfortunately, so my prayers and condolences to the family, friends, and fans of these two individuals. They may they rest in peace. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit of AEW Wrestling Dynamite. Uh. And John Moxley kicks off Dynamite, and uh, and starts you know starts talking about how he's been the best, even though he's, he's despite the loss of the title, and it seems like AEW uh, is his home, is his ring, and everything else. And and I thought he was going to address the MJF Regal situation and all that. So I said, okay, is anybody out there you know that can 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 match me? And then Adam Page, Hangman Adam Page, comes out, gets it to his face. John Mox says, you want, to know, you want to repeat what happened last time? Adam Page punches him. These two brawled to the point where, uh, to the point where officials and refer, uh, official, I mean, not officials, security staff and referees tried to uh, separate these two. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, the, the first matchup, Dex Harwood versus Brian Danielson, uh, it was a heck of a matchup. Brian Danielson did win the matchup. He plotted Dax Hollywood. Dax Hollywood was about to walk away, but then, uh, then Dax, after Brian Danielson won the matchup, Dax Hollywood shook his hand. It was it was respect between those two. It was a heck of a matchup. Tony Schiavone interviewed Ricky Starks, even though he won the uh, the world title number one contender eliminator matchup to uh, to challenge MJF at Winter is Coming, but he says he'll take place in the Diamond uh, Dynamite Diamond Ring Battle Royale. So that way he can have two opportunities, two chances at it. Uh, Moxley and meanwhile, Moxley and Page continue brawling, and then both, I mean, then they were thrown out of the building as a result. Renee Paquette tried to interview Claudio Castagnoli, Weedo Yuta, and members of the Jericho Appreciation Society: Jake Hager, uh, Matt Menard, Angela Parker, and Daniel Garcia. Between MJF, Stokely Hathaway, Ethan Page, Matt Menard. And then Angela, they should AEW should change its name to all AMW All Mouth Wrestling because all it, you got some of the loudest because uh, all they can do is yaka 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 yaka. She shut up and wrestle, dude. All it is yaka yaka. Reminds me of that Run DMC song. You talk too much, and boy, you never shut up. Hilarious. Um, and it got to the point where they were ignoring Claudio's casting only so much. He says he's sick of the whole thing, and he walked out in the interview. Well, you're about ticked off of Daniel Garcia. So I'm going to challenge you for the pure title at Final Battle, and saying that match will be signed for Final Battle. Speaking of titles, TNT title was on the line. Samoa Joe defending against A.R. Fox, the newest member of the AEW roster, and Samoa Joe ends up winning after the month.
Vader, and then he's about to dress the crowd, and then Wardle interrupts him. So, it's being the third member of that matchup from Full Gear, Powerhouse Hobbs, Journey in Oakland, um, his hometown in Oakland, Part 3. He walked by four guys who were gambling, they see him, and they're like, oh, whoa, well, you know, they probably recognize who he was. Then, this is where the, uh, uh, yeah, sorry for scratching my face. I think I, I forgot to shave. Anyways, this is where things got really, really, really dire. William Regal comes out, enters the ring, and introduces them to Maxwell Jacob Freeman. MJ uh, addresses the crowd, uh, crowd of why he aligned himself with William Regal. And then he's talking about how he's going to be the best, and he says, and he, 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 and he introduces a new AEW title that has a Burberry. You know, they call it the Big Burry, Bo Burry about the B3, or the Triple B. And he says that he's going to use it as a bargaining chip in the bidding war of 2024, hoping to write Khan. And he's, and he's referencing Nick Khan and the game Trips Triple H. And I'm like, oh boy. And then, and then he talked to William Regal, people asked Regal. Then he used the brass knucks and knocked out Regal. He's like, what? I mean, this guy helped him win the title, and now he does this? MJF, well, he's a world champion, all right. World champion jackass. And I hope somebody gets that title off him. Not because he's boring and all that, but he's a jerk. And the way he treated William Regal, the man who helped him win the title, he's a jerk. He is a jerk. And Tony Schiavone was right about him. He's a piece of you-know-what. I'm hoping that somebody beats the crap out of MJF, makes the title reign short. That's for sure. And if he makes any mom's basement jokes, I'm going to say, son, I don't live in the basement no more. Ooh, turkeys. And if anybody out there makes mom's basement jokes, here's an idea. I got two words for you. I'll suck it. All right. I'm no longer in the basement. You ding dongs. Anyways. Anyways. Danielson with referees and medical staff were helping put Regal on the stretcher. There, I'm like, Dan, Brian Danielson is going to be going to be full of PNV next week, or even just Friday on Rampage. And believe me, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be nuts. Anyways, um, Ricky Starks went one on one Aria Davari. Then Ethan Page and Stokely Hathaway addressed Stark, um was addressing Starks, but Matt Howard interrupts him doing the B one thing and all that. And he says, get your butt to the back, and blah, blah, blah. We own you, and all that. Man, and there's another, uh, two more loud mouths. Stokely Hathaway and Ethan Page. Look like all mouth. All the English. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, what a rock. Shut up. Shut up. You, I want to see if they, they respond to anything. Because all they do is run their mouth. You know, run their mouth. Run their mouth. Run their mouth. Hey. Uh, run their mouth. Okay. Time to... You know, run the mouth, run the mouth, run the mouth, run the mouth, run the mouth. The only part was a certain uh, preview. Uh, 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 oh, hi, thank you. And just wave hi. All right, now uh, it was on. Uh, all right, just give me a second here. Uh, Twitch and uh oh, that's for Miss Renee okay oh Kayla Braxton looking very gorgeous looking very pretty I will give that uh an emotional like okay let's see what I can hear and J Kirk right. a little a little bit more on that Okay, now, now where was I? I've kind of lost my, yeah, oh crap, am I bleeding? I think I scratched in the face. Anyways, uh, in short work, Ricky Starks defeated Ari Davari, uh, after, and then Tony Schiavone interviewed Jimmy Hayner and Britt Baker and said, hey, since Renee Buckhead's doing a sit-down interview with Soraya, I think you should do a sit-down interview with, with me, the world champ, it seems like, uh, Looks like Jimmy Hader wants to one up Soraya or something, Soraya or something like that. Women's action, of course. Willow Nightingale went one on one with Anna J. Uh, Willow Nightingale, Willow Nightingale won the matchup. I don't think Ty Mello attacked Willow Nightingale after the matchup, but Ruby Soho's music being played and and Ty Mello 
was like, where is he? And then Ruby Soho was right behind Ty Mello, Ty, and then she attacked Ty Mello around and stuff. So, and uh, it was after the matchup that the Willie Nightingale did pick up the victory over Anna J. A.S. And then Tony Schiavone interviewed QT Marshall, I was like to call him QT Fire Marshall Bill, and the AEW all in champion Orange Cassidy. And QT Marshall said, I'm going to challenge you for the title. Orange Cassidy says, no problem, you get your shot. AEW Rampage, no problem, you get your shot. You know, he says, it's going to be a Lumberjack match. Yeah, whatever. You know, I'm like, wow, I like that Orange Cassidy even more now. Okay, you got your shot, whatever. I mean, QT Fire Marshall Bill's going to get his butt kicked, that's for sure. And then Jay Cargill and the baddie sons, Kiera Hogan. In fact, uh, she addressed that situation. And then uh, Kiera Hogan, um, no, yeah, not Kiera Hogan. And she starts yelling at Layla Gray and uh, Red Velvet. Red Velvet's been injured, dude. It's like, it's called, you, know, you step up and get stepping. Then Bow Wow, come on. Bow Wow, dude. She ain't going to marry you, bro. Bow Wow interrupts that game and say, I have a lot of time on my hands. I'm like, what is Bow Wow? Is Bow Wow playing mind games with Jay Cargill? Does he, does he have somebody in mind that could beat Jay Cargill? I think somebody's paying Bow Wow. I think somebody's paying Bow Wow to throw Jay Car Cargill off for a game. Who the individual was? I, I think it's all a, a master plan by somebody. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the acclaimed promo with Billy Gunn, and they said they're going to be. Uh, they're going to address um, AEW um, Rampage, what's going to happen. And finally, uh, Trio's matchup, best of seven, the third matchup of the third of seven, with the Death Triangle up two to one. And against Death Triangle, against the Elite Death Triangle, would be um, the World Trio Champions would be Pac and the Lucha Brothers, uh, Pel, uh, uh, Penta El Zero Miedo and Ray Phoenix, while the Elite is the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. The Elite did pick up the victory over Death Triangle, giving them a them behind by one match. And Kenny Omega says, there ain't going to be no queen sleep, sleep, queen sleep, queen, uh, clean sweep, queen sleep, clean sleep, yeah, queen sleep, <sighs> uh, queen is sleeping, she's already resting in peace, she died back in July, I think. Now, uh, Kenny Omega says, there ain't going to be no clean sleep as long as the cleaner's here. It'll be a reverse sweep. And this is what closing out the show is the last in a long time we have done this. I give it to you adieu and goodbye. So, so that's where we stand. So so the death triangle is up two to one in this endeavor. All I can say is MJF, you're a jerk, a jackass, a dummy. I hope somebody beats you for that title. And if you go to the WWE, Braun Strowman, I hope he tips over your limousine. Alrighty then. That's all the time I have on this show. I'll see you guys later. Episode 198 is complete. Got two more episodes. Reached 200, like I said, by week's end. Tomorrow is December 1st. Time to count down till Christmas. It's going to be a crazy holiday season. I guarantee you. All right, I'll see you guys later. You guys have a wonderful day. Uh, peace and love. And, uh, and good night. Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget Production. And in association with a sweet bow for raving dingleberry telepictures and distribution. Thank you for watching today's episode of the show. See you on the next episode of the show. Goodbye for now. And have a very blessed day.